June 22, 2020, we will be discussing the rights of labor, the prerogatives of management, and the powers of the state. So we are trying to discuss the tripartism principle. And I request again all the participants to mute. Please mute because I can hear so many voices. Uh, that is the only appeal I'm, I'm making to you. I'm giving this lecture for free. I'm, I'm coming here very early. So please cooperate. I have to prepare some materials for you. This is my service to you as my offering to my alma mater, the University of the Visayas, Gullias Law School. In 1974, when many of you were not yet born, I was uh, a graduate of this college. And I, modesty aside, I graduated magna cum laude and class valedictorian. I was not able to take the bar review in Manila because I was very poor. I could not afford the only review uh, at that time was in Manila. And so I had my self-review, but with the grace of God and my hard work, I got 84.93 number 10 of, in the bar examination got a flat of 85. My, my grade was 84.93. I got line of nine in three subjects. So I am very proud and I am sharing whatever I have to you and I hope you cooperate. I'm very happy to welcome today the, the regional director of the Department of Education. Uh, Director Salustiano T. Jimenez, uh, my namesake and for sure my relative because there are only few Jimenezes in the whole Philippines. So to, uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, you look at the rights of employees, the prerogatives of employers, <clears throat> and the powers of the state. So whenever you uh, have a labor law subject, you always think of three of the three parties. The state represented by the government, labor represented by the union, and if there is no union by himself or by itself, and the company, the employer represented by management. Management is the agent of the employer. The union is the agent of the employee. And the government is the instrumentality of the state. And the three have respective powers and prerogatives. So tonight, I am going to discuss, hopefully we can finish all the powers, all the rights, all the prerogatives, but if not, we cover the most important. So the first right that I'm going to discuss is the right to self-organization because uh, as I have always told you, do not take the bar exam without memorizing Article 13, Section 3 of the Constitution. I repeat, I reiterate, do not take the bar examination unless you memorize, you understand by heart, in letter and in spirit, Article 13, Section 3 of the 1987 Constitution, which starts with this sentence, the state shall afford full protection to labor local or overseas, organized or unorganized, and shall guarantee labor. 
And one of the rights mentioned there is the right to self-organization. So let us now discuss the right to self-organization. What is the philosophy of the law in uh, granting the right to self-organization? Well, the state can protect labor if they are organized. It's very difficult to protect individual 40 million workers in the Philippines. 40 million workers. Organized or unorganized members of the labor force, 40 million. And so the state, in the first article of Book 5, uh, which is Article 217 and 218, 218 and 219, 219 or 218, the state shall promote collective bargaining. But there can be no collective bargaining without unions. And so the state also, as a matter of policy, is promoting unionism. In other words, if the, if, if the state would have its way, it's better that all the workers are unionized because, you know, it's very difficult to engage or to deal with individuals. So when the workers are organized, they can protect themselves. And more so, they can also have the right to collective bargaining. So I will show you this. Uh, this uh, can you see this? Uh, uh, Miss Eunice Wagwag, can you see this? And uh, Miss, uh, yes, mi, uh, Mr. Jesus Burdalba, can you see this on your screen? Sir, I can okay. see it. Okay. So this is not the solar system. Uh, as, you will, yeah, as you will see, number one is the person. When you are born into this world, you are born in it. The moment you are delivered into the world, you become a person a natural force. Therefore, you are a worker. If you're not in school, you, you should be working. And when you enter into an employer-employee relationship, uh, you become an employee. And when you join the union, number four, uh, you, you associate yourself with a union, then you are a union member. And the union number five becomes an LLO. What is an LLO? Legitimate labor organization. Because a union that is not registered does not have juridical personality. So number four, if you are only a union and you are not registered, you are just like a social club or a, a barcada that does not exist in the eyes of the law. It cannot do business. It cannot engage in a contract. It cannot own property. But the moment in number five, the union uh, legitimizes itself by registering, then it acquires legal personality. And once there is legal personality, it can file a petition for certification election or can request the employer to recognize the so in the event that there is a certification election and the union is the winner it will be certified as the seba what is the seba it is the sole and exclusive bargaining agent it is the only organization that can uh, that can represent the whole membership of the union and even the non-union members because they are members of Iglesia Ni Cristo perhaps they do not join the union but their position is embraced within the appropriate bargaining unit then they are represented by the SEBA 
So when the SEBA negotiate a collective bargaining agreement, the fruits of that agreement will also benefit the non-union member provided that they are, they are members of the bargaining unit. So ladies and gentlemen, I will refresh your memory. I'm sure that your professor in labor law gave you a distinction. What do you mean by member of a bargaining unit as compared to a member of the union? Let us imagine that there are 35 of you. Now, there are 35 of you. Now, there are 37 members in the class now. There are 37. So out of 37, you are the appropriate bargaining unit. What is an appropriate bargaining unit? All your positions are included in the definition of the ABU. ABU is ABU, appropriate bargaining unit. In other words, you become a member of the ABU not because you like it, not because you de decided to be a member of it, but you become a member because your position, for all, for instance, all of you are rank and file, not occupying a confidential uh, position. You are not supervisory. You are not managerial. You are rank and file. Your salary grade belongs to the rank and file. Therefore, whether you are a union member or a non-union member, you are a member of the appropriate bargaining unit. Do you understand that? Can you follow that? You become a member of the ABO even without your consent. It does not need your consent to be a member of the ABO. Can I hear from you? Uh, can you unmute yourself and tell me, did you, did you understand what I said? Yes, Paul. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, yes. yes, attorney. So, to be yes, a member, sir. you don't have to be. Uh, you have to give. You don't have to give your consent. But to be a member of the union, you know, it's possible that in a company with thirty-seven employees, no, thirty-seven employees. Uh, how many are there now in the class? 36 na lang, nagawas ang osa. So, according to the labor code, to form a union, you must have at least 20% of the appropriate bargaining unit. So, what is 30, what is 20% of 36? No? 10% is 3.6, no? Uh, so, uh 20 percent is about seven or eight so if you have eight if you have eight employees in a bargaining unit of 36 you can already form a union you can register that and so if there is another union in the same bargaining unit then the, you will fight it out in a certification election and the winner the winner takes it all if union a will win over union b Union A will represent all the 36. Union A will represent even the opponents, no? So, pag parang congressman din yan, nanalo ka sa iyong, sa iyong distrito, you represent even your opponents, even the, those who voted for the other candidate. So, the sole and exclusive bargaining agent represent the entire ABO. It does not only represent the union the union, the, the LLO, that it is, no? And so when it signs a CBA, it becomes a party to a collective bargaining agreement. Now, if management commits an unfair labor practice, for instance, I will transfer you, Salustiano Jimenez, I will transfer it to you to Region 8 because you are active union member here. I, I, I don't like a union and you are very effective in uh, organizing, so I will transfer you. That's an unfair labor practice because that transfer is motivated by an anti-union objective. In other words, that is a form of restraining, interfering, and coercing. 
which is explicitly enumerated as an unfair labor practice. And if the union becomes a victim of ULP or unfair labor practice, it, it can file a notice of strike. Look at number nine. So the union now, the union members become strikers. And then if the company will retaliate by terminating the services of the striker, then you go to number 10, you file a case, you file a case, and number 12, you become a litigant of labor. Or, or you will be subjected to retrenchment, redundancy, labor saving device under Article 283, which is now 298. Yung number 11 dyan, yung mga, yung mga aktibo sa union, Sinabject to retrenchment, redundancy, or kinlos yung brands where all the union officers are working para lang mawala sila. That is an unfair labor practice. And that is also an illegal dismissal. So, ang labor relations subject will end in number 12, which is labor litigation. That means labor arbiter, NLRC, Court of Appeals, Supreme Court. You know, look at the screen. This is one page. I tell you the entire story of labor relations. The effective educator or teacher, Director Jimenez, is one who can capsulize in one page the entire coverage of a subject. And I have been doing that since 1977. You are still. Uh, 12 years old or 11 years old, Director Jimenez, I was already teaching in the College of Law of UB. 19, 1977, mm. Attorney? Mm. I was ano 7 years that, old then. Oh. Okay. So at that time, I was a professor of law in the UB Gullias Law School. And I was handling subjects like wills and succession, uh, Roman law. No, I was not allowed to handle the labor law because our professor was still alive. He was our professor and he was uh, a very old man. No? And so, uh, I, as I was saying, Director Jimenez, on all the rest of you, uh, in, one, in one slide, I'm, I'm able to, cap, to capture and capsulize the coverage of labor relations from person to labor litigation. And uh, it looks like a solar system, but actually it is a metamorphosis uh, from, from, uh, from uh, pupa, chrysalis, up to larva or whatever, it becomes a butterfly. And this is how I teach in the College of Law. And I teach the, the we are just one subject, the right to self-organization. The right to self-organization is defined as the right to join, to assist, or to form. Take note, ha, merong mnemonic device, JAF, join, assist, or form. Can you capture that? And what is the purpose of a union? There are two purposes of a union. Collective bargaining, which is the economic purpose, and Lawful concerted action, which is the political purpose for mutual aid and protection. So, why are unions organized? What is the ultimate objective of a union? Both economics and political. Political means solution to labor disputes, participation in policy making. That's why. Kung walang union, ang management lang magbuot sa salary, ang management lang magbuot sa pag-discipline sa empleyado, pero kung merong union, the union participates in the formulation of salaries. The union participates in the employee discipline because the employee who is subjected to discipline is represented by the union 
as if the union is the lawyer for the respondent employee. So the union is for participation. The union is for economic improvement of the compensation. Well, in government, I will, I will take up later on unionism in government. That is another subject covered by another law. No? We will just focus on assist or form. Join, assist, or form. Kailangan maalala mo yan kasi pag nag-interfere ang management in the joining, in the assisting, or in the forming, if you, the employee, is in the process of joining, assisting, or forming, and management will RIC, R-I-C. What is RIC? Restraint, Interference, and Coercion. Si RIC nakikialam sa JAF. Ano yung RIC? Restraint, Interference, and Coercion. Or kung hindi RIC, si IDA. Ano yung IDA? Initiate, Dominate, and Assist. Kung ang management ang nag-initiate pag-form ng union, that is also unfair labor practice. Kung ang management nag-put up ng kandidato, that is also unfair labor practice. And assist. Kung ang management nagbigay ng pondo sa union, that is favorable to the union. But in the eyes of the law, it is an unfair labor practice. Gisubo o laban ng union ang tunay na kapakanan ng mga miyembro. So that is a bribery of the union. So dalawa ha, RIC at saka IDA. RIC is Restraint, Interference, and Coercion. IDA ay, ay Initiate, Dominate, and Assist. Did you get it, ladies and gentlemen? Please answer me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Do you think it is important? Yes, sir. It is important because that will make that will guide you in deciding whether there is unfair labor practice. Okay. So who are, who have the right to join unions? Who have the right to join unions? These are the specific coverage. Uh, can you see the mnemonic device? Stag sin. Can you see that? Yes, Hello? attorney. Yes, attorney. Yes, attorney. Okay. So, supervisors, number one. Supervisors are now allowed to unionize. Now, you have to know the definition of supervisor. They are the employees who are not rank and file, who are not managerial, they have the prerogative to effectively recommend. Take note of the word effectively. Effectively recommend hiring, firing, transferring, promoting. Paragraph M of the Labor Code of the Philippines. It's used to be Article 212. 212 plus 15. Kasi ng 15 articles eh. So, ang, ang former numbering Article 212, Paragraph M, Definition of Managers and Supervisor, dagdagan mo ng 15 yan, 217 uh, 217 paragraph M. So, supervisors are allowed to unionize. Number nyo na to unionize ng supervisor, taga Buhol o taga Cebu. Cebu Herrera, taga Yubi. Ay, ito, sultihan na mo para may balo mo sa kasaysayan. Niyad tong 
1952-53, doon ay balaod nga gitawag og Republic Act 875. Kanang ipa, wala pa yung labor code, ang balaod Republic Act 875. Ano yon? Yan ang tinatawag na Industrial Peace Act. Panahon pa yan ni Quirino, ni Magsaysay, ni Garcia, na taga Talibun, Buhol. Yan. Ang balaod at to, wala pa yung labor code, Industrial Peace Act. Under the Industrial Peace Act, ang mga supervisor were allowed to unionize. Pero pag-abot sa labor code, 1974, ni Ingon si Presidente Marcos, kanang mga supervisors, they are part of management. So why should you allow them to unionize against management? Conflict of interest yun eh. Yan ang, yan ang theory ni Marcos ha. And uh, so from 1974 hanggang dumating si Boy Herrera in 1987, 89, 87 Constitutional Convention, 1989. From 1974 to 1989, the right to organize, the right to self-organization on the part of the supervisor from 1974 to 1989. Pero dati na yan, from 1953 to 1974, dati nang merong right ang supervisor. So ang ginawa ni Sen. Boy Herrera, taga UB, graduate ng UB. Ang ginawa ni Sen. Boy Herrera, nag-author siya o balaod, unsay pangalan, Republic Act 6715. Sinong ka-author niya? Taga Leyte, 3rd District of Leyte. Si Congressman Alberto Beloso, yun ang boss ko sa NLRC. And he is the elder brother of the incumbent Congressman Vicente Ching Beloso, who, who used to be Court of Appeals Justice, Professor of Law of Ateneo, and also a former uh, Commissioner of the NLRC. So, I'm telling you that supervisors are now allowed to unionize Uh, because the abolition of the right to unionize from 1974 labor code up to 1989 when Senator Boy Herrera and Congressman Alberto Veloso authored Republic Act 6715, they have reinstated into our statutes the right of supervisors to join, assist, and form unions for collective bargaining, and for mutual aid and protection. Do you understand what I have been saying? Please answer me. Yes, attorney. Yes, attorney. Can I ba akong kisultin nyo? Daan na na nyo may bawaan o karoon pa na na nyo may bawaan? Karoon pa, attorney. Tingalig absent mo pag-discuss ni inyong propeso. Amo maminaw. Amo maminaw. Okay, number two, terminated employees who are contesting their termination. Kung ako ang employer, kanang maldito bang lahat na mag-union, tatanggalin ko. Tapos na ang union. But what is, what is the response of the law to protect the workers? Kung ikaw, ikaw, uh, Uh, Justin Ramos or Jesus Bordalba kung kamong duha nagtayo ka mo ng union pagkatapos na si Lina Almeda o si Fatima Morino mga babae naingon sila ato ning tanggal doon ng duha kay Moni gasamok-samok din eh gitanggal ng duha ngayon, ang ginawa nila, nag-file sila ng kaso, illegal dismissal. Not only illegal dismissal, nilagyan nila ng unfair labor practice. Kahit, uh, kahit tinood man. Because the motive behind the dismissal is anti-union. That is interference. That is restraint. Interference and coercion. RIC. R-I-C. Restraint, interference, and coercion. So, while the case is pending, illegal dismissal kay matagal mang magdesisyon nagkaroon ng certification election are they allowed to vote 
The answer is yes, because they contested their termination. Kung hindi sila nag-file ng illegal dismissal cases, hindi sila makabuto sa certification election. Of course, the management will object. Objection. Why are you voting? You are no longer an employee. You are your name does do not appear. In, your names do not appear in the payroll anymore. But under the provision of Article 269, which is now renumbered, dagdagan mo ng 15. Yan ang bagong number. They are allowed to vote. They are allowed to vote because in the eyes of the law, the relation still still exist. Do you know why? Nga naibalo ba mo nga nung ang usa ka tao nga gipapha sa trabaho apan ni kiha og illegal dismissal sa mata sa balaod the vinculum the vinculum of relationship still exists because it is the burden of management to prove the legality of this dismissal and since the case is pending Management has not yet proven by final judgment. No? Kahit ba natalo, natalo yung dalawa sa labor arbiter, pero nag-appeal, wala pang final judgment na nagsasabi na legal ang dismissal nila. So para, bang, para ba, Atty. Wagas, nga nag-file ka ng, ka ng itawag o annulment of marriage, pero hindi pa nag-granted yung annulment, yung hindi ka pwede mag-asawa pa because the Ben Coulomb of relationship still exists. Wala pang final judgment of annulment, di ba? So, ganun din ang theory sa termination of employment. So, pag kayo terminate, mag-file kayo ng kaso, pwede kayong bumoto, pwede kayong mag-participate sa election sa union, pwede kayong mag-participate ng strikes because that is incident. That is a necessary consequence of being a union member. In the eyes of the law, you are still union members. Do you understand that, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, attorney. Yes, attorney. Okay. Dugay mo 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 tubag, oi. Number number three. Kanang mga aliens nga doon ay valid work permit. Okay. Pag tinanong kayo sa, sa bar, may aliens exercise the right to self-organization? Ang answer nyo, yes, provided that the following conditions are present. Number one, he must have a valid work permit under Article 40, Book 1 of the Labor Code, as amended, period. And number two, he must be a citizen or a national of a country that grants the same rights to our citizens working therein. So reciprocity, ladies and gentlemen, is an internationally accepted principle. Remember that in the, in the Declaration of Principle in our Constitution, Article 2 of the Constitution, the state does not only renounce war, but it also adopts the generally accepted principle of international law as part of the law of the land. Diba? Reciprocity is an international law uh, norm. It is an inter international law generally accepted principle. Okay? Malinaw tayo ha. Government employees. I will discuss that under Executive Order 180. Mabuti nandito si Director Salustiano Jimenez because I'm sure that yung mga public school teachers, yung mga non-teaching personnel sa DepEd ay uh, pwede yung mag-join uh, ng organization but not for collective bargaining only for uh, collective negotiation. Iba ang collective bargaining sa collective negotiation. And uh, later on, I will ask you the bar question. May 
government employees exercise the right to strike. No, that has been decided already by the Supreme Court. And this case of Tupas versus National Housing Corporation. Uh, this is a corporation organized under Philippine laws uh, with original charter. Okay, I will I will discuss that further later. We go to security guards. Security guards under Executive Order One 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 issued by. President Corazon Aquino at the time when he she assumed the presidency, she abolished the uh, abrogated the constitution of 1973 of President Marcos. She governed under a freedom constitution. She, she was a monarch because there was no Congress. She could on, she is she was the only one who could legislate. And one of the law that she legislated is Executive Order 111. The other is Executive Order 180, granting the government employees the right to self-organization. Also in 111, granting the security guards, you know. There were many misgivings about allowing the guards to unionize when they are armed. You know, as in Executive Order 180, all government employees are allowed to unionize except, except the uh, armed forces of the Philippines, members of the PNP, uh, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, and Bureau of Fire Protection. Eh, hindi yan inaallow. But uh, the, the law is silent about Bureau of Prisons. Ngayon, kamong mga graduates sa law, pangutan on the mga, unsa may, what is the difference between a prison and a jail? Because a jail is under the DILG. Bureau of Jail Management and Penology is under the DILG. The Bureau of Prison is under the Department of Justice. Oh, anong kaibahan? Pag ikaw, abogado ka, makuha ka, gluha ka, kaibalo, ana, maka, makaulaw mana, na, una nga, mag-research you ka. Sir, ang kanang jail, kanang wa pa makumbikto. They are still waiting trial. Di man sila maka-afford o uh, bail or kanang ilang 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 crime accused sila ng non bailable so detained muna sila sa bureau of jail management and penology sila pero once they are convicted ipadala na sila sa national penitentiary sa munting lupa or sa san ramon penal colony sa dabaw or sa iwahig penal colony sa palawan daghan mga mga bilangguan sa buong Pilipinas sa mga kanang na convicto na Bureau of Prison na, na. Nya, ang kanang gi-exempt lang sa balaod sa pag union kana ramang Bureau of Jail Management wa silent mas Bureau of Prisons when the law uh, uh, the law what uh, inclusio onius est exclusio alterio Alterios, what the law does not include, it excludes. So, but if you will use the statutory construction of Bios Dem Generis, you may be able to justify that uh, what the able sought to be avoided applying to Bureau of Jail can also apply to Bureau of Prisons. That depends upon your. Uh, Argument, no? The law is not an exact science. Pag answer mo sa bar, lahat yes ang answer no ang imutanan pero dako pa kagrado ano? Mayo ka ma argue. Uh, bisag ayaw ka goal kung ang no ang answer yes ang imo basta mayo ka mo argue tagaan yung kagpunto. So arita sa Iglesia ni Cristo members. I'm sure that you know people who belongs to the Iglesia. They are not allowed by their uh, 
uh, kanang ilang mga uh, superior sa iglesia sila ni ka wala na si ka RD Manalo si ka kuana ka Eduardo Manalo na ngayon na agyan sa ilang teaching uh, you cannot serve two master so kung magmembro ka sa iglesia wag ka magmembro ng union kasi mapokus na imong attention sa union dili na ka maka attend sa mga services sa iglesia so dili gyud na nila gi allow but in the eyes of the law and as decided by the supreme court in the case of Alex Reyes versus Trajano if an iglesia ni Cristo wants to vote in an election they should be allowed to vote they cannot be excluded from voting if they are parts of the bargaining unit. Kaya din sa kaso ni Alex Reyes versus Trano, doon ay usap ka company na owned by Mr. Lucio Tan. Uh, it is a giant piggery somewhere in the province of Rizal. Mga, ang mga baboy doon, mga hundreds of thousands. Unya kanang gabantay sa baboy majority mga iglesia ang mga minority mga kristiyanos ang mga katoliko nagform sila og union unya pag abot na sa certification election ang duha ka contending union ang tupas at saka ang uh, to pass and uh, there is another union uh, they were contesting and pero nag-agree sila na we will not allow the iglesia ni Cristo to vote bakit pag pinabot mo yang mga iglesia ni Cristo no union ang ibutar ana butara nag ni union so wala na di yun ni dayon na atong pagka union so ni they, they agreed and uh, mid arbiter also agreed then secretary crescenciano trahano of the department of labor also approved na ang mga iglesia ang kanlang boto is separate ng ballot box the, it will not be counted because if you count the votes of the iglesia ni cristo the majority is no therefore there will be no certification of asiba the right to self organization will be defeated so since the policy of the law is to ang sabi ni Trano we should not allow them to vote but the group of iglesia ni Cristo led by Alex Reyes went to the supreme court and the supreme court reversed the decision of secretary Trano the supreme court upheld the right of the Iglesia ni Cristo members to vote because uh, there were three reasons why they were not allowed to vote. Number one, they are not union members. Number two, they have never voted in the past. And number three, if they will be allowed to vote, they will vote for no union and therefore the right to self-organization would be rendered nugatory. How did the Supreme Court rule on the three issues? All the three issues were ruled in favor of the Iglesia. Number one, they are not union members. So what? According to the Supreme Court. You don't have to be a union member to vote in a certification election as long as you are a member of the bargaining unit. Yun nga ang sinabi ko kanina eh. You have to make a distinction between a member of the union and a member of the bargaining unit. You become a member of the bargaining unit because your position is included in the definition of the scope that will be covered by the collective bargaining agreement. And who defines? Who defines it? It is the Department of Labor in the certification election. They will list down sino ang pabutuhin natin. No? Nagkamali ang dole dyan. Hindi nila pinaboto. When ang position na ino-occupy nila, pareho lang sila tanang gabantay sa baboy. Nga naman na i-discriminate na iglesia. So, number two, 
They have never voted in the past. So what? Is there a law that says you cannot vote now because you did not vote before? The right to vote includes the right not to vote. So if they did not vote before and they want to vote now, then allow them to vote. You understand that? Number three, if they they will vote if they will be allowed to vote they will vote for no union so what that is also a part and parcel of the right to self-organization because the right to join includes the right not to join so ang conclusion ko dito ang mga iglesia mas maraming karapatan no kasi gusto nilang bumoto pabutuhin kung ayaw naman na magmimbro hindi rin sila pwedeng mapilit yung mga close up provision yung mga union security clause na hindi natin uh, yung bang you will lose your job if you do not join the union that will apply to others but not to the iglesia the iglesia is immune from that pagka religion nga ang pag-usapan ladies and gentlemen Isipin lang ninyo yung kaso ng Ibralinag. Ito, nandito si Director Salustiano Jimenez. Nangyari yan dito sa Naga, Cebu, na ang mga membro ng Seventh-day Adventist, ayaw, ang kamay nila, ayaw nilang, ila, ang, ang kanang kamay, ayaw nila ilagay sa kaliwang dibdib pag nag-plug ceremony. Ayaw nilang magbaw ayaw nilang mag-participate pero hindi naman sila nanggugulo. Nahimik lang sila. Nagalit ang prinsipal. Are you listening, Director Jimenez? Uh, yes, yes, attorney. Di ba alam mo yan? Uh, ngayon, nagalit ang prinsipal. Anong ginawa? Inexpel sila. Yung mga bata ni Ibralinag. So, nakarating yan sa superintendent in upheld ng superintendent yung desisyon ng ng principal kasi magpatupad tayo ng disiplina dito sa eskwelahan di dili tatahuron kay niya yung mga bata nga dili dili mo dili mo kuyog dining atong mga patakaran no 15 justices ang nagdesisyon ibrali ng case na If the reason is religion, the freedom of religion takes precedence, takes primacy. That, that is their belief. As long as their action does not create chaos or disorder, they are only silently, silently in a non-violent manner protesting they are not they are not even protesting basta ayaw lang nilang sumanib so dito naman sa iglesia ni Cristo sa labor relations pag ang ground talaga religious pagbigyan mo yan hindi mo pwede yang pilitin no kasi ang pag-uunyon right yan pero mas mataas ang right freedom of religion Alam mo yung hierarchy of rights. Yung sa lahat ng rights, di ba? Sa Bill of Rights, number one, no person shall be deprived of his life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Neither shall any person be denied the equal protection of the law. So, yung tatlo yan, hierarchy yan. Ang pinaka-highest right is the right to life. Sunod the right to liberty. Pangatlo lang yung right to property. So, yung right to property, you can wait. Di ba? Sabihin mo, hindi na ako. Ako nga, pag nagbahin, nagbahin ang akong mga egsoon dito sa yuta na mo sa ronda, kami, tulumi, ngawa kami, ni wave me. We wave our right. Kana lang yung tao na wakahumag eskoy lang mo na ipadawata ng yuta kay kami mabuhi naman mi that is waving waving your property ang liberty pwede rin niyang wave di ba para hindi uh, arbitrary detention 
ang prisoner nag-exceed na sa number of hours, wala pa gihapoy kiha. Pagpirmahon man as police o waiver. So, we named nila yung property. But you cannot waive your life. That is the highest law. You can waive your property. You can waive, but you cannot waive. You cannot waive your life. In other words, Doctor Salustiano Jimenez, you cannot execute. You cannot execute a power of attorney authorizing your wife to kill you, because that kind of power of attorney is null and void because you cannot waive your right to life. That's why in this jurisdiction, uh, yung mercy killing is not allowed. It is a crime. No? Mercy killing is a crime. No, ganon. Ang dami na ninyong narinig sa akin, it, ito lang ha. Isang oras pa lang, marami na kayo natutunan. Correct or not? Okay, so is there any question before I proceed? No question. If you have question, you just uh, sound up and say, Sir, may I clarify something? I will welcome that. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you, attorney, for that. Ito yung mga taong hindi pwede mag-union. Kanina, stag sin, ha? Stag sin. Ngayon, himasin. Himasin, ha? Di, hindi yan himasin. Iba yung himasin sa himasin. Ang himasin, gamot yan, eh. Himasin. No? High level government employees. Ah, Director Salustiano Jimenez. Anong salary yes, grade? Sir. Anong salary grade ang hindi pwedeng mag-union? Yan. Meron yang salary grade pag level ka na ng Director 2. Director 2 ka, di ka pwedeng mag uh, magmember. Pero pag division chief ka pa, ang division chief pwedeng mag-union. Salary grade 25. Oh. Ang oh kanang division chief unsa man ay uh, salary grade ana uh, salary 24 attorney so kanang division superintendent unsa man ay unsa may level ana salary grade 26 that's presidential appointee na ang superintendent from ah, assistant okay. superintendent Okay. Equivalent of that is director to in other agency. Okay. So, yan ha. Pagka high level government employees ka as defined in Executive Order 180 Section 3, you are excluded from the right to self-organization. Number two, employees of cooperatives who are members of said cooperatives. Remember, ha? you are not just an employee, you are also a member. So, you have dual personality. If you are only an employee, but you are not a member, you are not excluded. So, pagka membro ka ng Bohol Electric Cooperative, or membro ka ng Sebeco, Cebo Electric Cooperative 1, Sebeco 2, Sebeco 3, Ikaw, membro ka. Tapos, nag-employee ka rin dyan. Hindi ka pwede mag-union because... But, if there are employees who are not members, they can form a union. Kaya nga, it is wrong to say, ladies and gentlemen, that unions are prohibited in cooperatives. Pwedeng mag-union ang mga empleyado sa cooperative na hindi sila membro. Pero karamihan good sa mga namumuno ng cooperative, imembro ginilang mga empleyado nila para hindi mag-union. No? So, that, but 
if you are uh, if you're answering in the bar you you have to be careful and you mention that do not only say employees of cooperative hindi ka pwedeng bigyan ng full na point chan one half ka lang kasi the employee must also be a member no and the managerial managerial employees as defined in article 218 paragraph m yung uh, an employee who is vested with the authority to hire fire transfer promote lay off discipline and uh, execute management policies so ikaw kung ikaw regional director ka sa dip ed managerial ka or executive ka na executive ka na nasa top management ka na hindi ka na pwedeng uh, mag-union managerial ka eh. pero ladies and gentlemen i remind you and you have to remember this there are three kinds of managers in the labor code alam ba ninyo yan na may tatlong klasing manager sa labor code Alam kong alam nyo yan, nag-disguise lang kayo hindi nyo alam, pa lumihilom lang mo, hindi ninyo alam. Pero I will remind you, Article 82 of the Labor Code, that is the first article of Book 3. Ano yun? Yun ang mga tao na hindi entitled sa overtime pay, hindi entitled sa holiday pay, hindi entitled sa night differential, hindi entitled sa mga hours of work, so, marami yan sila. Government employees, mga kasambahay, mga field worker, mga employees of establishment with less than 10 employees. At isa dyan, managerial employees. Members of the managerial staff. So, iba ang manager sa book 3 kaysa manager sa book 5. We are talking now of managers of book 5. Kasi ang purpose ng book 3, gi-classify kang manager para hindi ka makadawat o overtime pay. Pero ang purpose sa book 5, gi-classify kang manager para hindi ka mag-union. So ang tanong, Sir, pwede bang ma-manager ka sa book 3 pero hindi ka qualified mag-manager sa book 5? Yes! Because membro ka lang ng managerial staff, qualified ka na sa book 3. Pero dito sa Book 5, you must have the authority on your own without clearing it with a superior. Can you hire on your own authority? Can you fire? Can you transfer? Can you promote? Can you lay off? Can you discipline? Can you imagine that pag ako magturo nyo, klaruhon magin ako, Hili na pariho ubang professor basahan na mag libro niya ka mo po pangduka mo, pangguto mo di mo minaw. Ako, mangutahan na ako niyo, kasabot mo sa akong gisulti? Yes, attorney. Yes, yes manager, attorney. Manager in book 3 versus manager in book 5. Meron pang pangatlong manager, yung book 6. Pagka pinag-usapan ang loss of trust and confidence. You remember that, Attorney Wagas? Loss of trust and confidence? Yes, oh. yes. Dalawang tao lang ang pwede mong gamitan ng loss of trust. Una, managerial. Pangalawa, yung mga rank and file pero entrusted with uh, big amounts of money entrusted with highly confidential information, entrusted with trade secrets. Yan ang pagka nag of trust and confidence, ang tao, pag ginamit mo yung LOTAC, alam mo yung LOTAC, L-O-T-A-C, L-O-T-A-C, LOTAC, Loss of Trust and Confidence. Pag ginamit mo yung LOTAC, Ginamit mo yung lutak, dalawa lang tao targetin mo. Either manager or yung rank and file na mga cashier, mga property custodian, mga auditor, 
Ya, mga tawhana, mauna ay gamitan ni Muglos of Trust and Confidence. Kung nasa academic institution ka, assistant din ka sa College of Law, uh, you are uh, occupying a position of confidence. Kay balo ka sa mga grado, kay balo ka sa mga sweldo sa professor, kay balo ka sa mga uh, tinaguang mga confidential information. Madili ka, ma pwede ka magamitan o gloss of trust and confidence. Pero pag rank and file ka lang na wala ka namang highly high trust, kailangan mas mabigat. You committed an actual fraud. You committed an actual fraud. There is a substantial evidence that points to you, that links you with the act. No? Hindi pwede yung duda-duda lang. Hindi pwede yung rumor-rumor lang. Kanang duda-duda o rumor-rumor. Pwede yung magamit sa managerial o sa, sa confidential. I will give you an example. Kung managerial employee ka, uh, attorney Wagas o director Jimenez o kamutanan, maminaw mo, kung ang trabaho mo sa kumpanya, purchasing manager ka. Purchasing manager, ikaw mo permas na ng purchase order. Kanya na yung ban yan, milyon-milyon ang halaga. Kanya, pila rin si Wildo ni mo? Si Wildo ni mo, 50,000 o 60,000 iman. Tapos gabi-gabi na sa kasino ka. Kasama mo yung supplier. You and the supplier are together every night. Or ang asawa mo o ang asawa sa supplier, permi mga ito sa Singapore, mga ito sa Hong Kong, mag-shopping. That is, wala naman nakakita na ikaw ni Dawat kag-suborno. Walay checking, gitagaan kag-pera, wala. But the way you live your life, that is beyond your means. No? Pagkatapos, it's not enough that you are honest. You must behave in an honest way na you are beyond reproach. So, yung mga, yung mga purchasing manager na yan, yun ang makakasuhan ng trust and confidence. Iba kasi yung fraud. Yung fraud, nagpalsify ka ng resibo. O, oh, nagagamit uh, ka, may na malbers mo yung fan ka, hindi nagbabalance eh. Yun ang fraud. Pero pagka managerial ka, hindi kailangan fraud ang kinumit mo. When you put two and two together, you can make a logical conclusion. What is the meaning of substantial evidence? Ladies and gentlemen, if I am the examiner, I will ask you, what what do you mean by substantial evidence? Ang alam lang ninyo, proof beyond reasonable doubt. Alam nyo yun. Kondera sa conclusion. Even if other minds have other conclusion, as long as you can draw a logical conclusion by that quantum of proof and you have a mind that is reasonable, then that is enough. I'll give you an example. Limbawa, ikaw, Attorney Wagas. Example lang ha, Attorney Wagas. Kung limbawa, meron kang husband. Tapos isang araw, tinawagan ka ng office mate ng husband mo. Sabi, Attorney Wagas, babae din ako, pareho sa iyo, kaya naawa ako sa iyo, nagmalasakit ako sa iyo, Attorney Wagas. Yung husband mo, may girlfriend dito sa aming kusina. Ngayon po si Attorney Wagas, di ko matoy. Pagkabuutan na na akong bana. Night of Columbus, pag una. Unya, lay minister, pag una. Unya, ikaduha, mahadlok na siya na ako. Usara na ka. Usara na ako ka ngurub. Nguruban ko lang na akong baan na mahadlok na na ako. Di gina siya kabuhat, anak. Pagin mo to, si Atty. Wagas. Unya, kay, 
hapit ng kada adlaw na gid i-text sa gina siya, i-text, i-email sa atong ni Wagas kung gusto mo bigyan kita ng picture o nag-outing ka ngayon sa Boracay o sila na naman nag-holding hand sila ganon natulog na tanan sila lang duha para ganon hinahinay na yung pagduda si Atty. Wagas pero wala pag-iit siya ebidensya tapos ano usap kahapon ana, mentras na siya sa College of Law ni Ingon ni, ni, ni tawag ng itong babae Atty. Wagas kung gusto ni mo nga makita mo sila na naa sila karon sa iskina sa Birodriguez ug sa Puente Osmeña dapit do donay ko an dia donay kan ana na nag standby lang duha no so uyawan ni si attorney Vargas ni ni ingon siya sa iyang mga estudyante banera ko ninyo kinsay donay sa kanan uban ta kay akong adte ta ni attorney Vargas sabi ni Ator ni Wagas, Uy, sasakya namin yan ah. Yung nag-drive, husband ko yan ah. Yung katabi niyang babae, hindi ako yan ah. No? So, meron, meron na bang ebidensya si Ator ni Wagas? Wala pa. Kasi nagtapad lang yan eh. Natural, magka-office mate, nagkakatapad lang sila. Para, parang close lang sila. Wala pa ang ebidensya yan. Pero man, mamaya-maya, bigla amang kumilos yung sasakyan tapos pumunta doon sa yung tinatawag na kuan yung biglang liko sa bayuko pagkatapos merong sinyas na yung ano ba ako ng anong motel ba sulod ni sulod to si na sulod man tong husband ni Atty. Wagas dito sa motel niya kauban tong babae tapos kay 3 o'clock pa man to sa hapon niya si Atty. Wagas profesional na niya disente guna siya wa gina siya mag wa gina siya mo react ana ba ko lang siya call niya dito lang siya sa Starbucks ato bangan dito sa motel do na Starbucks niya inom inom lang siya yan ningon tin ng mga estudyante ma'am mauna na mi oi kay hapon na ara pa mi klase niya si Atty. Wagas po sige panguna lang mo dito inom na siya ng inom mga 38 na good ka tasang kape ang iyang nainom wa pagyod maka mugawa sa motel no ningon na si Atty. Wagas kay ba man ko ning motel ba kay kani adto iya man sa kong invite pero wala gi ko maana diha no wa jud ko maana diha pero iya kong gi invite ya sa dalaga pa ko wa jud wa jud ko mauban ya tapos pagka alas 5 na ni gawas naman nagawas na tong duha Anya, parang basa-basa ang mga buhok nila ba? para bagong paligo. Karon ang pangutanan ako ninyo. Mga, maayo mga mga logical thinking. Do you have qu enough quantum of information which a reasonable mind will accept to support a logical conclusion? Anong, anong tingnan ninyo? Ikaw, uh, Miss... Uh, Erlinda Perales, anong tingin mo? Uh, guilty or not guilty? Hindi mo. Wow, di madungog. Eh, pataas lang imong... Oh, pataas lang tudlo ni mo, basta guilty. Guilty or not guilty? Oh. Dile guilty. Oh. Kasi naghahanap kayo ng proof beyond reasonable doubt. Gusto gin ninyong makita nga the naked, naked truth one on top of the other. Hindi iyang kailangan sa labor case. Ano bang ginagawa ng dalawa babae at lalaki sa loob ng hotel na from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock? Pangutan noon tamo. Ikaw at Torne Wagas, ano ang, kung ikaw at to ba, on sa may mong desisyon? How oh, guilty ito, attorney? Guilty, good. Mm. No. That is an illustration of substantial, substantial evidence. evidence. Because, oh, because there is enough information, enough proof, eyewitness, you are an eyewitness, which 
a reasonable mind will accept to support a logical conclusion. Kasi, ang sabi nga ni Erap, ipangutan na si Erap, what is the difference between a conclusion and an opinion? Diba o ba mga na? Naingon si Erap, kung opinion, makapasok tayo. Conclusion, hindi tayo makapasok. Diba? Diba? O, oh, pangatawa mo. <laughs> oh. So, kanang substantial evidence, muna yung kisultin ninyo in relation to our discussion of managerial employees. Oh, kita mo, nasa managerial employees pa tayo. Pag ako magklase nyo, class... Next is Armed Forces of the Philippines, Police Personnel, idagdag mo yung Bureau of Jail Management and Penology plus yung Bureau of Fire Protection. Tapos confidential employees are those who are vested with information related to unions. So yung confidential employees na related to the product, kung ikaw, taga San Miguel ka, pinagtiwalaan ka ng formula ng beer, confidential yon position mo. Pero that is not the confidentiality that is contemplated here. It is always related to the union. Halimbawa, kung alam mo yung payroll, magkanong sahod ng executive natin, you are the one that should be excluded because if the union will know, How much is the salary of the managerial and the executives that will greatly affect the CBA negotiation, the collective bargaining negotiation? There are information that you need not know because it will it will disturb your mind. No, what you do not know will not hurt you. And nyo yan, what you do not know will not hurt you. Kaya kayo, uh, Attorney Wagas, kung hindi nagtapat sa inyo yung inyong asawa o sa inyong boyfriend, ayaw lang mo kayo, boss kayo. Ayaw lang nilang masaktan kayo. Kasi what you do not know will not hurt you. No? So ayaw na nagdagang pangutana kayo. Matubag o niya ang inyong husband niya, masaktan mo. Kaya kanang husband ninyo o magsinungaling na ang purpose, Ana, nga dili mo masaktan. So, noble ang kanyang intention. So, ayaw yun. Ayaw yun pag pugsa na musulti siya sa tinood. Kanabit ang may yun na, pamili ka. Ang, way, ang girlfriend mo o ako. Kanya, pili yun ang girlfriend. Do not ask a question. Sa 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 rules sa kuan bitaw sa sa bigyan sa professor natin sa practice court never ask a question sa witness na hindi mo alam ang itubag sa witness kay ma mapornada niya ang kuan mo ang depensa mo so ask a question only when you know what is the answer attorney okay? magitagag idea ang mga laki dere Ah, mas marunong <laughs> kanang mga laki ha, attorney. Nabuutan man, buutan. Mas bright pa na ako. Ako, buutan kayo ko. Kayo, wa, di ko kani ako, istorya ra, wa, di ko ka, experience na. No? Ayaw lang mo pagkuhan na. Well, attorney, pag till ito the Marines. Pagkuhan na. Hmm. Para hindi maboring yung ating klase. No? Okay. Next is employees of international organizations with immunity. Alam man ninyo that the Asian Development Bank, the International Rice Research Institute, the International Catholic Migration Commission, yung mga UN bodies, ang mga empleyado sa mga, sa mga organisasyon na yan are not allowed to unionize. They are not covered by the labor code because these international organizations are granted diplomatic immunity by the sovereign political power. So if you are if you are uh, President Duterte, and here is an organization, a global organization, who wants to enter the Philippines and 
operate in, within our territory. And if the president will grant him, grant that organization diplomatic immunity subject to ratification by the Senate, then that is a political question that cannot be questioned in court. And so if the president will say the employees of the Asian Development Bank, the, the International Catholic Migration Commission, the International Rice Research Institute, they are not including the UN High Commissioners for Refugees, they, uh, the employees are not allowed to join unions. That is valid because we are a part of the international family of nations. And that is a generally accepted principle of international law. The grant of immunity to certain organization is a political question cannot be questioned in court. It is not justiciable. It is an exception to the power of judicial review where it is provided that the Supreme Court cannot be deprived of its power to review, revise, reverse, alter, modify decisions of lower courts or executive agencies and quasi-agencies, quasi quasi-judicial functions. There is the power of, of judicial review. But as an exception to that, that power cannot be used when it comes to political issues. Because political issues are not justiciable issues. Are we clear? Clear ba tayo? Clear. Thank yes, you. Yes, attorney. <laughs> okay, okay, yes, attorney. As of today, there are two ways of creating a union. One registration, second is by chartering. What do you mean by chartering? When TUCP, for instance, yung union ng ALO, ALO TUCP, National national organization uh, to merong isang restaurant for instance sa Cebu na nagtayo og union ang mga waiter mahimo man nga ang Alo TUCP muhatag og charter anang union na sa dili pa na registered nga union na sa Dole that union now can have a limited personality only for the purpose of filing a petition for certification election. Later on, if, if that union wants to own property to sue and be sued and to be entitled to tax exemption, it is necessary that the union becomes an LLO legitimate labor organization by the process of registration. So, chartering of local is allowed. Parang Rotary yan eh. Bigyan ka ng char charter. Parading Toastmaster Club yan. Bigyan ka ng charter. Pero dito, for purposes of our union, this is now recognized because Article 241, uh, which used to be Article 234-A, has been uh, inserted into the Labor Code. Inserted kasi pag das a amendment, that's an insertion. Pero na-renumbered na ngayon. The Labor Code has been renumbered. No? Uh, so, uh, Mr. Carion. Uh, Mr. Carion. Are you here, Mr. Carion? Present. present. Huh? Mr. Carion? Present, present. Can you read that? Can you read that? Please read that. Para makainom ako tubig. Can you read that? Lakasan mo, ha? Hindi kaya tano ka basa, eh.
Okay. Dahil na lang pabasa ko na ito. Pwede ka basa. Kinsa may makabasa na nga. Maayong buti. Ikaw, Mr. Bordalba. Can you read it, Mr. Bordalba? Yes, sir. Please read it. Uh, the Chartered Local uh, immediately acquired acquires a limited legal personality that can be invoked only for the filing of a petition of a petition for certification election. For the purpose of becoming a SEBA or sole and exclusive bargaining agent, the chartered local only acquires full legal personality upon the issuance of a certificate. Legal, legal personality. Yes, sir, legal personality upon the issuance of a certificate of reg registration after full compliance of the requirements, read the document enumerated under Article 241. Okay. Is it necessary that application for registration and documents be certified under oath? Yes. That is uh, very clear that all certifications must be under oath because if you tell a lie, you can be charged of perjury. <clears throat> if you said that you have members constituting 20% of the bargaining unit, when in fact and in truth, you do not have members, you are not telling the truth. So you can be prosecuted for perjury. May a labor organization acquire legal personality and become a legitimate labor organization by registering with SEC, not with OLE? The answer is no. This is a case based in Cebu, an old case, plus law versus CIR. You cannot, you cannot become a legitimate labor organization by registration with SEC. Only DOLE registration will uh, make you a legitimate labor organization. May another labor organization in the same ABU or appropriate bargaining unit be organized and registered despite the presence of a duly certified SEBA? The answer is it depends. So in the bar examination, you answer the examiner begs to distinguish his answer. You always answer the bar examination question in a third person singular number. The examinee submits. Do not use I submit because, you know, in when you prepare a pleading, you say comes now the complainant in the above entitled case. Even if you are the complainant, you do not say that I am the complainant. You always use the third person. No, the third person. Because the first person is I. The second person is you. Then the third person is the, the examinee submits that the answer is it depends. If there is a close up, the answer is no. Because if there is a close up, you cannot form other unions before the freedom period. But if there is no close up, there is no union security clause, the answer is yes another union may be registered and there is a third paragraph even if there is a closure if it is already a freedom period then it, during the freedom period which is the last 60 days prior to the expiration of the cba that union can already be registered Can you attack the, the registration of a union uh, by collateral attack? No, the Constitution provides in Section 8, Article 3, the right of the people, including employed in the public and private sectors, to form unions, associations, or societies for purposes not contrary to law shall not be abridged. Therefore, the grant of such right is not absolute but subject to the conditions that their purposes are not contrary to law. 
registration is a reasonable process. In other words, the question, I, I would like to clarify the question. Can you attack the provision that requires registration? Uh, itong kimyo, kinwestyon nila yun na bakit kailangan pa mag-register ang isang, ang isang union when in fact the right to self-organization is an inherent right that is acquired by virtue of being a union. Pero the answer to that is there is a condition set for to join association, societies, or unions is subject to the phrase for purposes not contrary to law. So how, how will the state know? How will the government determine that the purpose is not contrary to law if there is no registration? Because in registration, there is a requirement for the submission of constitution and bylaws. So it is a valid exercise of police power of the state to require the submission of constitution and bylaws so that all the unions operating within the territorial jurisdiction of the Philippines shall be duly accounted for so that we will know whether this union shall be entitled to exemption from taxes, whether the union can own property, can alienate encumber mortgage and sell property. So how does the state know that if there is no registration? Why is it important to determine whether the union is legitimate or not? Because rights will not arise if there is no legitimacy. For instance, you are not registered, you are not legitimate, you cannot file a petition for certification election, except if you are being chartered by a federation. You cannot also uh, demand for collective bargaining negotiation because in the eyes of the law, you do not exist. You do not have a juridical personality. You are just like a minor, or you are like a person suffering from mental or physical incapacity. In cases of chartered locals, when does the act status of legitimacy accrue? There are two stages. First, upon the issuance of the charter, there is a limited legitimacy for purposes of filing a petition for certification election. Second, when there is registration with DOLE, all the rights and privileges appurtenant to a labor legitimate labor organization shall accrue. So the two registration, two levels of legitimacy. Okay. If you remember, ladies and gentlemen, the case of Bank of PI. When Bank of PI merged with Far East Bank and Trust Company, in other words, the Bank of PI was the surviving corporation and Far East Bank was the non-surviving corporation. In your private corporation law, you know that all the assets of the non-surviving corporation are absorbed by the surviving corporation. And all the liabilities are also assumed. And so in this case, which is decided by the Supreme Court in Bank with Madame Justice Leonardo de Castro as Ponente, the Supreme Court said, because there were two unions, Merong Union Sapar is Bank, 
merong union sa BPI Bank. Ang mga Far East Bank na wala na ang juridical personality inabsorb na ng BPI. The first question is what happens to the employment status of the employees of Far East Bank? The answer is they are absorbed. They, are, they cannot be left in a legal limbo in the language of the dissenting opinion of Justice Arturo Brion. We cannot leave behind the employees of Far East Bank while all the furnitures, all the real estate, all the vehicles of Far East Bank were deemed transferred to the surviving corporation which is BPI, the human resources, the personnel were also deemed, if they are asset, they are also absorbed. If they are liability, they are also assumed by BPI. So the next question is, are the employees of Far East Bank duty bound to join the union in the BPI? Well, it happens that the union of BPI is Associated Labor Union. And the, the union of Far East Bank was another union. And they do not want to join. They did not want to join with ALU. And so the question now is, if management will compel them to join or the incumbent union ALO will require them to join because if they refuse to join, there is a, there is a union shop which says that all new employees are duty bound to be a member of the bargaining agent, the ALO within 30 days from becoming regular employees. And failing so, the union may ask for their termination, for their dismissal. And that is a valid, valid law and principle as enunciated by the Supreme Court in a long line of cases, the validity of union security clauses. So the question, the answer is no. They have to join. And then some people would say, why are we forcing people to join? Is this not a violation of their freedom to decide? Well, the answer of the Supreme Court is, is this. The freedom to decide of the minority should yield to the greater and more long-range objective and greater consideration of the majority. The majority decides to ratify a collective bargaining agreement that includes a union security clause, then the minority must follow. So there is no more question about validity of union security clause. Now, if there is a mixture, before pag may mixture, merong supervisor nag-join sa rank and file, pwedeng ipa-annul, pwedeng ipa- The present law, it is no longer a ground for cancellation of registration. The only remedy is to, to remove those who are not properly uh, admitted, those who, who entered when they are not supposed to be members of the bargaining unit because they belong to another classification. Hindi mo pwedeng pagsamahin yung isda at saka mga ibon. Kung ang ibon naligaw na punta sa union ng mga isda, ay dapat palayasin na yung ibon na yan pero hindi mawawala ang juridical personality ng union ng mga isda just because napasokan sila ng ibon. 
Kaya yung mga kaso tungkol sa Toyota, Toyota Motor Philippines Inc. at saka Tagaytay Highlands, those are already abrogated by the Supreme Court. Those are no longer applicable. If the intention of the Labor Code is to promote unionism, then we should not allow unionism to lose the juridical personality just because there is a stranger in paradise. The stranger was able to penetrate ang mga maldito ang gaw ang mga minaldito ng management kanang union sa rank and file pasudla nila ang supervisor unya makasulod ng supervisor tayla nila og annulment kay na nag nagjoin yung kwan nagjoin ang mga isda at ibon hindi yung pwede paalisin na lang yung hindi dapat pero yung juridical personality ng union should be preserved because it is the policy of the state to promote unionism. So, ito si President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo ay inaalaw niyang maglaps into law itong Republic Act 9481. Hindi niya binito, hindi rin niya pinirmahan. So, naglaps into law na yung mga pagbabago ngayon, the charter need not be certified under oath, charter certificate. Pero yung kanina, under oath, yung mga requirements for registration kailangan under oath. Pero ito, certificate na lang of a legitimate LLOs need not be under oath. Tsaka yung mga secretary, Uh, certification and now when the secretary fails to submit a financial report to Dole is no longer a ground for cancellation ipanis na lang yung secret uh, treasurer at secretary that is an administrative offense but it should not constitute a ground to cancel the certificate of registration so ladies and gentlemen, it's already 8 o'clock. I think we should continue this discussion next meeting because uh, uh, it is getting very interesting with some decided cases. Uh, I hope that you learned tonight. Did you learn tonight? Yes, yes. Oh, sandali lang, tinan ko, eh, mag-picture taking tayo, take picture taking, buksan ninyo yung kuhan nyo. Yes, so, okay. I, I will now, I will now uh, remove the uh, this sharing. I will remove the uh, sharing. Uh, remove. Leo, <laughs> could turn on sa inyong video, guys. Ah, remove yes. na natin yung kuhan sharing. Stop the sharing. Okay na po. Ha? Huh? Okay na ito yun eh. Okay. Okay. Uh, one, two, so, three, smile. So, another Oh, ipakita kita ko yung mitsura ni Derek Jimenez. Hi, Sir Sal. Biling. Bi idea, Sir Sal. Biling. Thank you, Kai, Attorney. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you, Attorney. Okay. Thank you, Attorney Menes. Thank you, Dad. Salamat. Good night. Good night, Attorney. Happy Father's Day. Okay. <laughs>